Good morning and welcome to Sunday, June 14th, 2020. And today's devotion is titled, We Are to Be Witnesses of Jesus. And we'll be reading out of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it reads, After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. When I was eight months old, and this is not me speaking, it's the writer. When I was eight months old, December 8th, 1941, my mother was driving our old Chevy, and I was laying on the front seat with no seatbelt. The radio was playing music when Franklin D. Roosevelt interrupted and made an emergency announcement that the United States Congress has declared war on the Empire of Japan in response to Japan, uh, Japan's surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7th. After that announcement, one could not go anywhere in the whole world that people did not ask, have you heard? Jesus died on the cross almost 2,000 years ago to pay for the sins of the world, making a way to receive eternal life. He gave his church authority to carry the gospel news to the whole world. Then, 50 days later, he immersed them in supernatural dunamis, energy, and power, and launched his New Testament church into all the nations. Acts 8, 4, and 5 says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Japan's Admiral Isaruko Yamamoto said of Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor under his command, I fear all we have done is to awaken a sleeping giant and fill him with a terrible resolve. The Jews at Thessalonica shouted in fear, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Using his New Testament churches, Jesus declared war on Satan and sin. And our final thought is, The war is still raging. Which side are you on? Do not forget your armor. And we are referenced then to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. I'm going to read those verses because this makes references to the armor of God, which is a very important set of scriptures in the New Testament. When Paul was writing to the church in Ephesus, he was reminding them, we are in a battle. We are fighting against the principalities of the air. We are fighting against Satan and his demons. And so we as Christians need to be equipped. We need to put on the armor of God. And let me read to you what the armor of God is specifically. Again, it's in uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. And they read, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand." Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. If you notice, the majority of the items that are mentioned in the armor of God are defensive. Uh, if you think of a knight in shining armor, the entirety of his suit is all about defense. Because you're going to take attacks, you're going to take uh, shots from the enemy, in fact here it says fiery darts, are going to be thrown at you. So we are to prepare ourselves in a defensive manner. But what about offensive? 
Does it say anything about offensive? Well, it does. The final item in verse 17 is listed as we have the sword of the Spirit. So what is the sword of the Spirit? Well, we have the Holy Bible. We've got the Word of God that we can use as an offensive weapon. The Holy Spirit that dwells within. It's the same Holy Spirit that is God the Father and God the Son. And we know that God the Son was the Word of God made flesh. So we have the Word of God, the Holy Bible, the Scriptures as an offensive weapon. Now, how prepared should we be to don our defensive armament? Well, one more reference I want to read to you. The book of uh, 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 18, discusses... I'm sorry, not uh, 15. I said 18. 1 Peter 3, 15 tells us about being defensive and how to defend that faith that we have. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So always be prepared to give a defense. Here they use the word answer. But it's basically a defense of your faith. If somebody interrogates you or or questions as to why you have faith in the Lord Jesus, be ready to give an account. Because what kind of testimony would it be? What kind of witness would it be if somebody were to say, why do you believe in God? Why do you believe in this Jesus character? Why do you read the Bible? If you just look at them dumbfounded without a response, you've lost the battle. You've got to be prepared. You've got to have the armor of God already on you and ready for the defense. Be ready to take those blows because they're coming. If you are a Christian, you have a target on your back from Satan because he wants to re ruin your relationship with the Lord. So if you are a Christian, never be caught unprepared. Always have the whole armor of God on you at all times. And as it says in Second First uh, Peter, be ready always to give an answer for your faith. So that's my devotion for the day. I hope it was educational. Uh, something different, a little illustration that we can draw in our heads about uh, what we are to do to prepare to engage in battle with the enemy. Because the battle is coming, and for the most part, the battle is already here. So, And if you know somebody who's new to the faith, if you have a friend or family member who just got saved, read these to them. Pre help prepare them and explain the importance of always being ready to give an answer and to be ready on defense at all times. So with that, I'll let you go. Hope you have a great day. Today is Sunday. It's church day. So hope you have a wonderful service at your church. God bless, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.